And welcome back to PSA TV. This is the Wake Up Call segment. I'm Avalon Williams. On the phone with us this morning, he is the political leader of the Progressive Empowerment Party, Mr. Philip Edward Alexander. Good morning, Philip. Good morning, Avalon. Good morning to all your viewers and your listeners. Good morning to your crew out there on this bleak and rainy day. It is. That, that took some commitment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Philip, I, I just want to jump straight into it. I know you had your launch of your party in San Juan. How was that? Over it the weekend? Mm -hmm. it, was, it was actually very, um, it was a good test. Every time we have a public meeting, mm -hmm. we put more and more members who have not been tested to speak. And in a, in a venue like that, with so many moving parts, it gives you a good idea of what a political campaign should be like and it's a good test of people's abilities mm -hmm. it was nice it was nice okay i know we had a discussion before you were here in studio with us but there were a few questions outstanding that persons wanted to get a response from you one of the questions here this morning it's actually on our page one um person is asking you here what a pep going to do about the labor laws to protect workers in tnt Labor laws are important. Mm -hmm. um, business laws are important. What we need, and, and I keep saying this, what, I, what we need is more dialogue and less fight and bacchanal. Mm -hmm. There are stakeholders in every sector of society. Business cannot survive without labor. Government being in as much business as government is in needs to be addressed as well. Private sector protections for labor is important. Mm -hmm. All of those things need to be discussed. We need to arrive at a place where all of the stakeholders in the economy benefit from the economy and not just a few. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Philip, we know there's, uh, it's like a race coming up to this election time. I just wanted to ask, do you really think that PEP is ready to you know, lead this country? The actual governance is the easy part. It is the politics that is difficult. Mm -hmm. Santa Tobago has very, a, a very divided, confused, and jaded electorate. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for other politicians to misdirect the narrative and introduce <clears throat> yard foul conversations and who tipped who conversations. When people woke up this morning, some of them would be in flood and still have no water in their taps. Mm -hmm. Many going to go to work today, and in exchange for their labor, the money that they receive, no matter how much, can't get them the things that the same labor exchange for money in other jurisdictions would afford. Mm -hmm. We go into the banks, we're being, we're being charged fees and charges that are reducing bank balances by the day. Banks have stopped paying depositors interest so that putting money in the bank actually costs you money now. All of this, these are the issues that people need to have conversation about with the state, with the government. Mm -hmm. What is being done for the basic things that make up a life? That is what the voter should be given. Our voter has been relegated to a low information voter. So they think that flooding as an act of God is not a responsibility of the government. And trying to get people to understand that the government's job is to mitigate the act of God, but it misses them because they've been dumbed down and misspoken to for so long. So our mission remains inform, educate, and empower. Mm -hmm. If we had the finance that we needed, the politics in Trinidad and Tobago would already be different. It's about communication. Clearly, we have a message. When you call me to interview me this morning, you ask me what we're talking about. So I don't mind. You just ask me anything you want. And that's how we train our members. If you recall, at the PSA function I spoke at, I didn't walk up to the mic with a piece of paper. We train our members every single Wednesday. We have every single Wednesday we have a training session led by Sean Sunaran, Deputy Chair, and it's just about issues of governance, reinventing Trinidad and Tobago, so that all members could speak intelligently to issues off the cuff. Mm -hmm. Our chances 
at the polls right now remain contingent on if we could get people to leave the moorings of the perceived safety of racist voting and actually invest in issue voting. Mova, Beatam, Lavantel, and Silots this morning mm -hmm. needs a government that is different to the rest of the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Mova, Beatam, Lavantel, and Silots need a social development intervention on a massive scale. We need to go in there and redevelop the people, the family, the community, and give them hope and opportunity. We need a baseline under which no citizen should fall. As the third wealthiest nation in the Caribbean, in the Western world, we should have less socialism and more socialist capitalism that leaves none of our people as far behind as so many of our people are. Mm -hmm. Philip, yesterday was the new um, law term opening. I mean, I want to ask, what, what's your views on the judiciary and the status of court cases and the lengthy delay of justice on, the ju on justice? Wow, that is a whole show by itself. Yeah. So let's take it from the top down. The comment that law fees in Trinidad are too high, I underscore that to the millionth degree. Our law fees in Trinidad and Tobago are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But it's set by government briefs. A lot of law firms make a lot of money from the state, and certain law firms that are in bed with certain political parties benefit when that when their party is in office. We need a disconnect in that, in the awarding of briefs for doing basic legal work. And I mean, all of this is important and critical to the development of a real and functional judiciary. Mm -hmm. Vernon de Lima, one of the most renowned criminal um, attorneys in this country's history, he said to me that, that, that Gary Griffith is going to be successful in bringing murderers off the street, mm -hmm. but with a justice system that cannot handle more than 15 murder cases a year. We're just going to be piling them up like firewood. There's going to be people on remand and in jail for 50 years who can't get a, a, an appearance in the court. And, and that is, an, that is a, a complete frustration of basic human rights. We've said, and if you, if you could just let me answer this. Sure. We've said that our criminal justice system, our entire legal system, but our criminal justice system more so, must return to respecting human rights and civil liberties for it to contribute to the redevelopment of Trinidad and Tobago. We mm -hmm. have proposed that, that no one can be arrested and held for more than 24 hours except in special circumstances where an officer of the court at the, at the, at, at the level of magistrate or judge grants the police an additional 24 hours upon request that is not to be abused so that people cannot just be arrested to make a case. We have seen that happening as of late, that people are picked up and held for days mm -hmm. while an investigation is going on. That, that should not be how it is done. Arrest and charge within 24 hours or release. If you charge somebody, you should have six months, a speedy trial statute we need desperately in this country. Mm -hmm. You should have six months to prosecute or release or drop charges. And once you begin the actual prosecution, you should have no more than five years to prosecute this person. One day more than five years and the case should collapse. We need to put the responsibility back on the officers, the officers of the court, the officers of law enforcement, mm -hmm. to respect people's rights because we are supposed to have been standing on the premise that everybody is innocent until proven guilty. And we need to get back to this. Speedy justice is one of the strongest tenets of that to make sure that everybody respects our justice system. Philip, how, how would you um, deal with national security, though? 
When you say national security, on one level, because we need to secure the nation's borders to stop the flow of drugs. Right. There's a, there's a maritime security wall initiative sitting on the Minister of National Security's desk this morning, and it's been there for over a decade, mm -hmm. and it will secure the nation's borders. From the moment you uh, from the moment you erect the maritime security wall, which literally stops all seagoing traffic three miles out at sea for search and for either allowance or interdiction, you you then create a safe space for law enforcement to protect the country. You need to underscore that and support it with un unstuffing all containers on the port. We can't do that in the port of Port of Spain. Mm -hmm. The port of Port of Spain was overdue to be removed because 90% of all container traffic that comes through the port of Port of Spain leaves Port of Spain, so it serves no purpose adding that to the 250,000 people that come to work in Port of Spain every single day. We've made a mess of the capital city just by mismanagement. Move the port of Port of Spain to a larger facility. We, prop we propose Point Lisas, 10 times the size. Shipping and container traffic management is a massive owner of foreign exchange. So it will, it will serve two purposes at one time. It will allow us to get into the shipping industry on a massive and global scale, mm -hmm. which is important, especially based on where we are located in the world and outside of the hurricane belt. But it will also give us the opportunity to unstuff all containers that are coming through the port to Trinidad and Tobago. The Prime Minister, Keith Rowley, said more than 40% of all containers leave ships, leave the port without even being looked at. That is madness in a country that is known worldwide to be a narco state. Mm -hmm. We've had situations where drugs have been found in containers of poultry. We, we've also had the, 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 the situation where a container was opened in a vehicle showroom and drugs fell out on the floor. So we can't have a single container leave the port unexamined. If we secure the nation's borders and we unstuff the containers on the port, immediately we will end the flow of drugs and, more importantly, illegal guns into the country. Yeah. Once you stop the flow of illegal guns into the country, once it is impossible for you to drive a ship or a pirog up onto any beach or up any river in Trinidad and Tobago and offload, once the maritime security wall is functional, then you will have you will have the opportunity to clean up the police service. We've spoken with members of the New York City Police Department Internal Affairs Division, and they've said to me, we transform this from the murder capital of the world to the number one tourist destination on the planet mm -hmm. by cleaning up our police service. When we talk about our 6,000 police officers here as a challenge, they laugh. They deal with 65,000 police officers. And he's what our our liaison in the internal affairs of the New York City Police Department, he says, you don't need whistleblowers. All you need is to follow the money of the average police officer. Mm -hmm. and, and they've also said to me that it is manifestly important that police officers and the New York City police officers tell you they don't fear terrorists, they don't fear mafia, they don't fear gang members, they fear internal affairs. Internal affairs job is to prosecute corrupt police officers. Mm -hmm. From the moment you remove the rogue element from the police service, you could then go about the business of motivating through incentivization the now law-abiding and lawful police officers by giving them commissions and bonuses on all of the work that they do, especially work above and beyond the call of duty. The only thing that works in Trinidad and Tobago is the record. Because everybody sitting in that record getting a piece of that pie. They are motivated. Mm -hmm. We need we need to continuously be doing drug testing and we need to be continuously training our police officers. In the United States of America, and especially New York City, this model of the mobile command is the most functional model where you break up your urban areas into beats for for police officers to walk and every 10 streets is connected by a mobile unit that is driving around with two armed police officers in it as backup and response. All of a sudden, crime response will be immediate and on time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. by having police officers accustomed to being in the community 24 hours a day, the people who live and work in the community will get accustomed to knowing who their officer is and more importantly, they will recognize strangers to the community who might be some pe people of interest 
that they need to be protected from. All of these, and I mean, it sounds overly simplistic to just list it out like this, but there are so many things that need to be done, polygraphing to keep um, police officers properly motivated and law abiding. We also need to promote our police officers. We need to give them based on performance, based on education. If you are a, a police officer and you further your, your education and you get degrees in criminology and law enforcement, of course you should be promoted. Mm -hmm. We also need, and this is another issue, we also need to give our our assistant commissioners of police, our deputy commissioners of police, at the level possibly even of superintendent of police, the same tax breaks and the same salaries that senators who overnight show up into the state machinery get and benefit from. These people who have, who have a, a track record of a life of service of, and, and, and good and honest service, should be rewarded for it, as should school principals. These posts and positions in society should be returned to being among the highest and most respected, not relegated to bad talk and, 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 and name calling. We need to get back to there. We could fix Trinidad and Tobago. We just have to want it. Yeah, I think the Commissioner Gary Griffith will do a great job with that in the police service too. So, um, Philip, another thing that was trending, uh, a BBC documentary of the amount of Venezuelans here in Trinidad and Tobago, but the Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, has taken strong objection over this, which says there are 40,000 Venezuelans in TNT. Do you believe that this is the amount of Venezuelans here in this country? I don't understand how the Prime Minister is allowed to make statements to the media, mm -hmm. and the media not challenge the source of the information. Two years ago, two and a half years ago, Prime Minister said there is 30-something thousand illegal guns in the country. He just made it as a statement. Mm -hmm. he, he, he used a number. And I've been asking since, how do you know this? How do you, There's a joke with a little boy who went to the post office with his mom, and he saw pictures of criminals on the board mark wanted. And he said to his mother, why they didn't just arrest them when they had them to take the picture? Mm -hmm. No, that's a joke. But if the prime minister has information as to an accurate number of guns, why they didn't pick up the guns and why are there no steps taken to follow the guns and pick them up? We say 57 people in 2017, then Minister of National Security, Dylan, said to the nation, said to the parliament, 57 of our women have been trafficked. He used that number. And I've been asking since, who are these women? How do you know? Where have they gone? What are you doing to pick them back up? So the BBC could have said 40,000. They could have said 400,000. How would the Prime Minister know? He needs to tell us in a nation where we have filmed video of people bringing donkeys and cows into Trinidad on payrolls. Yeah, yeah. How, how could he know? is my question he is going to challenge the bbc and they are going to embarrass him because our borders are porous a, a sailboat sailed 400 miles up into tobago with nobody on it mm -hmm. and there was nothing to stop and interdict and check it it could have been loaded with a nuclear device trinidad and tobago is at risk to its porous borders. And until the government takes serious steps, first and foremost, the, 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 the boats tied up at hearts cut in Shagaramas 24 hours a day, helping nobody, helping nobody at the very least, build four jetties on the four corners of Trinidad and Tobago and break them up, put three boats on a, on a corner. Trinidad is almost a square. Mm -hmm. It is insane that all of our boats I have spoken to helicopter pilots who say, Mr. Alexander, we have our helicopters based in the north and the theater of operations is the south. And we burn a half hour of fuel getting to the theater of operation. And we need to save a half hour of fuel to get back. And it is a waste of time, resources, and effort. And nobody's doing nothing about it. Now we've grounded all the helicopters. We've had pilots, national service pilots, airline pilots, actually reporting to law enforcement they are watching drug transactions taking place in the open ocean in Trinidad's waters 
And there's nobody to respond until we seriously take the issue that Trinidad and Tobago is a corrupt little narco state and that government after government after government have failed to confront and resolve this issue. All the rest of it is old talk and mama guy. Mm -hmm. Philip, what um, would you like to see in the upcoming budget? <laughs> in the upcoming budget, I would like the Minister of Finance to answer to the people of Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. why the banks are allowed to put a 13% tax on every transaction on the foreign exchange spread. Mm -hmm. We sell our U.S. dollars and everything that we earn, we earn in U.S. dollars. So we sell it to the city banks for $6. And then everything we buy, we import. Mm -hmm. And we buy them in U.S. dollars. The banks then sell it to us at 6 and 7 That spread between $6 and $0.01 cent and 6 and 7 is at 13% of the book's tax. That increases the cost of everything in the country beyond what it should be. I'd also like the Minister of Finance to explain to the nation why our dollar is one-seventh a U.S. dollar. Why? If we export everything we export, if we're the third wealthiest nation in the Western world or world until this government, but, but why is our dollar so weak and the Barbados dollar so strong if all Barbados has is tourism? And Tobago could have more and better tourism than Barbados in a heartbeat if we wanted. Why is our dollar so weak and if it is one seventh to a u.s why does it have one fifteenth and sometimes one thirtieth and one fortieth the purchasing power we need to understand we need to use examples a person digging a hole in new york city and a person digging a hole in Trinidad tobago both get fifteen dollars an hour but what the gentleman in, in new york city could do with his fifteen dollars and what the trinidadian could do with his is in vast difference mm -hmm. in the budget. I would hope for a right sizing of the economy. I would hope for a cancellation of the foolish justice on time prisoner contract that is just wasting money and does not deliver justice on time. We've been saying for decades, build the courts either in the jail or next to the jail. So you will walk them to the, the trial and not have amalgamated security trucks running people off the road, ostensibly taking criminals to court. Mm -hmm. I would like to see that gone. I would like an investigation into the provision of ambulance services in the country. We're still nowhere close to that magic 15-minute um, arrival time that would save lives. I would like an explanation as to what is actually done with the $5 billion spent on public health every year if our public health is such a fiasco and what is the transfers of a billion dollars inside the auditor general report that has no breakdown as the way it actually goes i would like the appointment of a supervisor of public works who will investigate and approve or reject all public works especially road paving we have contractors paving roads in this country that don't last five years the Americans built hurry roads in this country on the North Coast, in Wallerfield and in Shagaramas 70 years ago, mm -hmm. taking heavy, heavy jamming that's still there. We need those kind of things addressed in our budget and not more of the Moviland and foolish talk and sweetheart budget nonsense. We need less handouts and more hand ups. We need the creation of organizations that support and develop small businesses. The top 10 companies in the world today all started in somebody's garage. We have no entrepreneur support in this country, despite having brilliant Trinidadians. I want to remind you that it's a Trinidadian that invented the automatic wanton folding device. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's just a simple example. Our budgets are used as political tools to dispense political fodder to feeble-minded people. We need our budgets to be broken down by constituency, by job, by what exactly this money is going to, what is the budgetary allocation amount, and why is this being done? So that the public knows in each constituency what to expect and not a wild hodgepodge grab for money. 
with money being voted into special purpose companies that only seem to serve to end run the tenders process and facilitate corruption. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Philip Alexander. We'll just ask you for your closing comment this morning. Everything in this country, everything about this country could be fixed. We could have peace and prosperity. Yeah. Trinidadians could have an opportunity to maximize their full potential. We have some of the best people in the world. We live on the best island on the planet. Trinidad and Tobago boast things like the largest pitch lake, the best cocoa, the second hottest pepper, the best honey. We have a nylon pool. Nobody else have a nylon pool. For a while, we had the largest brain coral and one of the oldest old world old growth forest. Trinidad and Tobago is pregnant with potential. All we need is real, real leadership. And it is time we started to have these conversations. Forget skin color and hair texture and ask those political aspirants, what are you going to do to fix this country and develop it, develop it for me and mine? That's where we need to go. Those are the conversations we need to have. I think when we get there, we will be on our way to first world and development. Thank you very, very much for having me on your show. Today. Thank you, Mr. Philip Alexander. Bye-bye. That was the political leader of the Progressive Empowerment Party, Mr. Philip Alexander. He is no stranger to us here at the PSA TV. Just to give you an update of what's happening across Trinidad, because we are, we are getting um, updates on flooding throughout. So there's an ongoing flooding across Port of Spain with street flooding now reported on Rison Road and Edward Street. Street flooding also reported on Saddle Road, Santa Cruz, around the Book Malatro Secondary School. There's also no lights at the Payaco at the Piaco Airport there, that's the intersection to turn to go into Trin City as well. There's also thunderstorm developing near the northern side in Trinidad. And also there across in Bermuda, there is most likely a Hurricane Hamboto may target Bermuda as well. So for those that are on the nation's road this morning, be very mindful and remember not to speed and do not be on your cell phone. So we're going to take a short break and come back to the program.